The central theme of my paper concerns the interaction between societies and their natural environments in order to better understand the emergence of sustainability crises. I tackled this by looking at a particular interaction complex involving food, energy and climate change. I've been exploring this territory for a number of years and from different research directions. I was interested in the tomato and how it became part of global food culture. In the early 20th century it was a pioneer for mass production for mass consumption. And if you go into a supermarket in the United Kingdom today you will find a vast array of tomatoes produced under different cultivation regimes from different natural environments across the world. For a brief episode you could find genetically modified tomatoes on your supermarket shelves. But this was a particular and I think rather limited window into understanding and exploring society nature interactions. Recently I was involved in research in biofuels with colleagues from the University of Manchester in Brazil, the USA and Europe. This brought me closer to a more systematic understanding of society and nature and interactions because it brought into sharp focus the significance of the finitudes of Earth's resources. So on the one hand it was clear that biofuels in producing renewable energy were a response to peak oil and assumptions about a peak in oil production in the face of rising global demand. But on the other hand biofuels provoked a storm of controversy around the use of a different finite global resource, namely land. Should land be used to produce food or should land be used to produce fuel? Significantly the three regions of the world responded to these crises and challenges in very different ways. But it became clear that these political responses were in turn shaped by the natural environments in which the societies were developing. So the natural environments have to become a core part of any explanation of societal variation. However, researching this controversy also shifted attention towards the fact that agriculture was now being seen as itself a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. Producing food to feed a population growing to 9 billion and with changing food demands became recognised as a major risk for, for, for climate change. And so that pushed me into thinking much more generally and systematically about the nature of the interaction between the use of land, the use of energy and the generation of climate change. If you look at the carbon footprint of Brazil today for example, it is very different from China, from the US, from Russia. And this is in part because of its response to energy crises and to climate change, but also in part because of its un unique and special endowments of land, of sun and of rain and its then subsequent role in being a major producer for, of food for the growing world population. In order to understand and develop a theoretical framework for understanding the society nature interactions I've drawn heavily in inspiration from the work of Karl Polanyi and his economic anthropology, in particular the concept of an instituted economic process. But you'll see in my paper that I combine a comparative method with long duration historical explanation. And I believe that if we are to better understand the nature of the current sustainability crisis faced by the world today, we need to have an explanation that is based on these two major sources of societal variation, spatial on the one hand and historical on the other, 
if we are to come to a good understanding of the dynamics involved in society-nature interactions.